The Witches, written by Roald Dahl in 1983, is a beloved children's novel that combines elements of fantasy with themes of identity, family, and the battle between good and evil. Alongside Dahl's other popular works like Matilda, James and the Giant Peach, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and the BFG, the book captivates young readers with its imaginative storytelling. Several of Dahl's books, including The Witches, have been adapted into films, with versions released in 1990 and 2020. Beyond his children's stories, Dahl also wrote screenplays and works for adult audiences. He notably penned the script for the 1967 James Bond film, You Only Live Twice. During World War II, Dahl served as a spy for England and was a member of the Royal Air Force, showcasing his diverse experiences and talents. In recent years, Dahl's books have undergone editing to align with evolving anti-bias standards. In February 2023, certain changes were made to address potentially problematic content and ensure inclusivity. Renowned filmmaker Steven Spielberg, who directed the film adaptation of the BFG, has commented on criticisms of Dahl's alleged bigotry. In an interview with Manola Dargis, Spielberg highlighted the paradox between Dahl's controversial views and the inclusive nature of his children's stories. He emphasized how Dahl's narratives celebrate and embrace differences in races, cultures, sizes, and languages. The story in The Witches is narrated by an unnamed boy who speaks directly to the reader. In the first chapter, he distinguishes between witches from fairy tales and real-life witches. Unlike the stereotypical image of witches with broomsticks and black hats, real witches appear as ordinary women, capable of blending in seamlessly. They could even be someone as trusted as a beloved teacher. The boy emphasizes that witches are exclusively female, and within the realm of evil spirits, they hold superiority over men. Although the narrator is originally from Norway, he has grown up in England due to his father's business. The boy shares a special bond with his grandmother, known as Grandmama, who resides in Norway and enjoys smoking cigars. Tragedy strikes during a frosty Christmas when his parents tragically die in a car accident. Left in the care of Grandmama, she tries to divert his attention from the loss by teaching him about witches. Initially, she recounts stories of five children who supposedly disappeared due to witches, but the boy challenges her, pointing out that they may have transformed into other objects like stones or porpoises. Grandmama corrects her mistake and goes on to explain how to identify witches. They wear gloves to hide their claws, wigs due to their lack of hair, and possess blue saliva and fiery eyes. Witches despise children, finding the cleanest ones to be the most repulsive, with their scent akin to dog poop. Among the witches, the Grand High Witch reigns as their wicked and all-powerful leader, addressing them annually at a gathering in a hotel. In accordance with the boy's late parents' wishes, he and Grandmama return to England. While constructing his treehouse, the boy encounters a witch, but manages to escape harm by climbing away. Planning to spend the summer in Norway, they alter their plans when Grandmama falls ill with pneumonia. Instead, they stay at the luxurious hotel Magnificent in England. Grandmama gifts the boy two mice, William and Mary, but the hotel manager objects to their presence. Grandmama stands her ground, intimidating the manager until he relents. Inspired by his mice, the boy aspires to create a white mouse circus and trains them behind a screen in an empty ballroom designated for the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children RSPCC. Unexpectedly, elegant women start filling the room, and while remaining concealed, the boy realizes that they are actually witches. The boy witnesses the grotesque forms of the witches and overhears the Grand High Witch's diabolical plan to eliminate all the children in England using the Formula 86 Delayed Action Mousemaker. The witches intend to purchase sweet shops, distribute free treats laced with the complex potion during the grand opening, and transform the children into mice the following morning while they are at school. The panicked teachers will then attempt to exterminate the mice with traps and cheese. The witches applaud the Grand High Witch's scheme, hailing her as a sensational genius. However, when one witch questions if the plan goes too far, the Grand High Witch reacts violently, incinerating her with fiery eyes. Recognizing the challenges faced by the older witches in acquiring the extraordinary ingredients for the formula, the Grand High Witch provides them with alternative formulas they can utilize. She instructs them to visit her hotel room later to collect the formulas. To demonstrate the effectiveness of the potion, 
the Grand High which gives a chocolate bar containing the formula to a food-obsessed boy named Bruno Jenkins, promising him six more if he meets her in the ballroom. Bruno arrives and undergoes a rapid transformation into a mouse, which the witches observe eagerly. Before leaving, they detect the presence of the narrator behind the screen and capture him. The Grand High which forcefully administers the entire contents of a bottle down his throat, turning him into a mouse. Although he doesn't mind his new form as mice have no worries about school or money, he realizes he needs to find Bruno and inform him of their predicament. Concerned about Bruno's unsympathetic parents, the two boys scurry to Grandmama's room. She sheds tears but finds solace in the knowledge that the narrator is unharmed as a mouse. They soon discover that the Grand High Witch's room is located directly below theirs, with both rooms having balconies. Grandmama assists the boy in descending onto the Grand High Witch's balcony, where he discovers a bottle of the formula intended for the witch's food. By consuming the formula first, the witches themselves will be transformed into mice, ensuring they won't harm the children in England. Grandmama attempts to explain to Bruno's stubborn and obtuse father that his son has become a mouse, but her efforts are in vain. Consequently, Bruno remains with the boy and his grandmother. Grandmama leads them to the dining room for dinner while the narrator sneaks into the kitchen. Utilizing his tail, he deftly maneuvers and successfully pours the potion into the witch's soup. Filled with a sense of exhilaration, the boy momentarily forgets his precarious situation. However, the kitchen staff spots him, and one of the cooks severs his tail before he hastily returns to his grandma, who tenderly bandages the wound. Bruno's father confronts Grandmama in anger once again, unaware of the imminent transformation awaiting the witches as they consume their soup. Although the adults maintain their composure, the children delight in the fantastical metamorphoses taking place. The boy and his grandmother may not have eliminated all the witches in the world, but they have become an indomitable team. United, they will dedicate their lives to tracking down and eradicating witches wherever they may be found across the globe. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.